About half a year ago, I bought a six foot water box tank secondhand and Galleria Aquatica moved it into my townhouse only for me to move three townhouses down about three months later. I went through quite a process of trying to escape this tank. I had a vision for it being a peninsula tank where I wanted to have a rocky cliff and I wanted the fish to be able to swim around it. However, this was easier said than done. I tried multiple things. I used a reptile 3D background to try and create the cliff face, but to no avail. I tried using rocks to do it, but it just looked unnatural because of the type of rock that I used. However, about a month ago, I met Jason, who has his own channel, Australian Biotopes. Jason took Nick from Keeping Fish Simple and I out on a bit of an expedition to find some rainbow fish and get some inspiration from looking at the different types of biotopes in the wild. Jason takes footage of different biotopes. It's a bit of a passion of his, but the other thing he also does is some really amazing aquascapes. So these are biotope aquascapes that mimic what it looks like in the wild environment, and he's very, very talented at doing that. So when Jason offered to create the vision that I had for this peninsula tank, I jumped right on that, and I was so happy for him to come and do that. We're gonna be able to show you step-by-step -step how to actually create something like like this and you can actually build up the substrate layer by layer and create a nice natural riverbank cliff face. I really hope you enjoy this video. If you do, don't forget to give it a like. Let me know what you think in the comments down below and if you're enjoying this type of content, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel. Without further ado, let's get into it. Jason wanted to start with a nice clean slate, so the first thing we did was drain the tank, then get all of the sand out of it. We got a squeegee sponge and just squeegeed as much of the water as we could because it was really difficult to pump the water out or to siphon it out when it's so shallow. Then once that was all done, we had a nice clean slate to start with. And so this fabric is called, it's Geo fabric. Normally you get it in white is most common or black but it's fish safe and they use it for drainages on the sides of roads and stuff like that but I was lucky enough to find somewhere that has brown stuff so if you you won't see any of it and it's only mainly just some of the gravel on that and keep it away from the side so you don't see it what I might actually do is put the drainage cell in now and rather than put the drainage cell around the filter box I might just backfill it with sand so it looks natural as well from the sides This black carton type stuff here is the drainage cell. You use that for draining um, water on rooftops and stuff like that when they do roof gardens. Mm. It's also fish safe and durable, mm. lasts forever. Now we're just placing the drainage cell down to see how we want to place it. It actually interlocks like this. You can see it, lock, it locks in together, but it locks in one way. And just put it up against there. It's a nice firm base for larger rock. What I do is I backfill this with sand as I go along. Uh, roots can still grow through it and everything nicely in that. And I just step it up as I go. So I'll probably end up cutting these few pieces smaller again and just step it up and then just add the rock around it and over the top of it. Backfill it with sand. You don't, you don't even know it's there. So it looks really good. And it will float by itself, but once you get all the sand in there and you get all the rocks and that around it, it's not gonna float. So if I need to anchor down a piece of wood, I can screw it to that put all the sand and rocks around it and you won't even know it's there and the wood will appear to be sitting there nicely and it won't float up. We use the old sand that I had just got from Bunnings that is a very clay based sand that doesn't look too natural but we use that as a filler and Jason said it's really important to make sure that you push that right down into the crate because you don't want to have any air pockets in there at all. Now what I'm doing now is I'm putting the second layer of this on after I filled up the bottom layer with the um, wastage sand basically and what I'm going to do now is fill up the edges with the good sand so the wastage sand doesn't blend into it and I just keep building up the sides as I build up these and that way you get the um, the growth, the grow sand and everything in the middle, but you don't see it around the sides. You get the nice clean sand around the sides and we slowly build it up 
And then when I get to the second layer, I'll probably start putting some river rock and that in there to build it up even further. And then we'll start putting some driftwood and some larger rocks in place to make it look more natural. And then we just slowly flow it down to just about nothing down the other end. And we continued this process as Jason added layers of putting the old sand in the middle where you're not going to see it and then the nicer sand around it. All right, so we're just going to have a quick lunch break in a second. And in the meantime, Jason's just having a bit of a play with it and seeing what might look good in there and there. And we're getting some of the rocks and materials and stuff ready for the hardscaping. And then we've also got uh, you out here with a bunch of different materials on it. It really helps having a vast selection for something like this because oftentimes Jason would place something and then have a look and swap it for a different rock and it made a big difference having options to choose from. I'm trying to do it in a way where you can still get a little bit of or a little bit of cleaning access up the side and then try building up more up in the center if I can. Yeah. See how that goes. If that doesn't work out, I'll just keep building it up in the back corners sort of thing. Sort of try and taper it down and put a few logs and that in there amongst it. Do you want to have some more little rocks? Okay. Can you pass this to me? Have a look at it. Yeah, it's a big rock. <laughs> I'm try and maneuver this bit of wood in into the corner of like that. As you can see, it's really good having the geofabric underneath because then you don't have to stress about scratching the bottom of the glass. Do you have any things that you look for, like when you're trying to place it? Just trying to make it look like it's naturally flowing downstream. Just try and make it look like it's meant to be there, sort of thing. Mm -hmm. That might even be better on that side behind the rock, that piece. I'll move it back that way a little bit. And then what I'll do is back fill in there as well. So, um, like it's actually buried in the sand a little bit. Jason got some of the old sand again and used that to backfill it. Then he added the nicer gravel on top of that. When you're looking at it through these little crevices, yeah. people tend to admire it and look into these little crevices and that at least you haven't got any dead spots there you've got like proper river rocks sitting in there it's like it's actually natural yeah like it's sitting in a proper stream so attention to detail yeah being that it's a central tank like it's not a um sitting up against the wall mm. it makes it a little bit more difficult because you've got to try and it's made it look good yeah. yes all three sides <laughs> can't hide anything Jason used the smaller rocks to slowly build up the layers and pack the gravel in between those rocks so that it was a nice and firm base. All right, we've got another very big rock. We went through a few different rocks trying to find the perfect one from the end of the tank. In the end we did decide that these ones were too big. Even though these really big rocks looked nice, from some angles they covered some of the scape up and being a peninsula tank where you want to see it from all different angles, it just didn't quite fit. So we ended up opting for some smaller rocks on the end instead. So just put another big rock in down there and then adding in some more medium sized ones. Are these ones you were saying are for anchoring? Yeah, yeah. Just, to, just to push, keep the wood in place for me. Yeah, what we're doing now is just building up the hardscape and then filling in some little pockets as well. Fill in little pockets so it looks pretty natural. And so we just added that one in and then you were saying you're going to cut some more of that crate stuff. Yep, we'll yeah. see that flat rock there so it looks natural. a bit more of that crate stuff to build it up again then. Yeah. 
Alrighty, so what we're doing now is we're actually going to fill up this back corner more um, and make it almost kind of go off to the side because it's just a little bit too skinny, this tank, to have it so that there's gaps on both sides and I think it's probably going to look more natural anyway. Going up on one end, Jason's just building it up on the side there, which looks really, really nice and then adding some different size pebbles and stuff in between things. So lots of different types and different sizes and stuff to make it look nice and natural. And just pouring that in as he goes. Just leveling up each level for the next one to go in. Okay, so even though for most of the scape we haven't had to use any glue at all, we've just built it up, we are trying to put some little more kind of delicate bits of root just around the rocks. And so we're gonna use this liquid glue here and a little bit of toilet paper to glue some of the finer pieces on so that they don't float. From Mad Aquariums. From Mad Aquariums, thank you, Jack. Is it open? <laughs> It's making a dissolving sound. <laughs> yeah, probably start smoking up as well. I don't think you really need too much. If you watch it, it'll start smoking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Strong glue. And then Jack was saying that if you just sprinkle some sand on it Draw too, sand. then it yeah it makes it blend in. I'm just gonna add some rads that Jason brought over. So these are also called ornate rainbows and these are F1 ones. So their parents were wild caught, but we're gonna add them in just to the sump here with my other fish, just so they're not sitting in the bucket for any longer. The glue that we got from Mad Aquariums ended up holding up really well to this day and it's been about four weeks at the time that I'm filming or recording my audio. The root has stayed and it was quite a big one as well. So that glue worked fantastic and it worked so quickly as well. All right, so we're adding some bits of big rock and gravel and then some fine sand to put in as well. And so do you mostly keep this type of sand on the end? Um, just like a bit of a dune towards, uh, because it'll get, it'll, the water would swirl, mm -hmm. the bigger stuff would get backed up against the rock. Yeah. Then there'd be a um, more of an other grade then behind that, just a mixed grade. Yeah. Then the finer stuff at the end sort of thing. Still mix some bigger stuff in with it, but for starters, just start with that finer stuff. So is that just something that you've learned from observing different creeks? Yeah, or? yeah, you just go and photograph the creeks and you see the, where the rocks sit. And you always embed them into the sand, sand a little bit too. So they never sit sort of directly on top. It looks like they've been there for a while then. Yeah. It was really quite incredible watching this all come together. It's not easy to make something like this. It's a real work of art that he creates. Different sizes of rocks, the way that it all flows, the symmetry, but also making it look natural at the same time. It makes it look easy when he does it, but for anyone who's ever tried aquascaping before, you know how tedious of a process it can be and how hard it can be to get things to look right and to look natural, but Jason just does it so effortlessly. It's really quite incredible. Pretty much finished with the hardscape and just now adding some soil in. What type of soil is it? Um, that's the stuff that you got, the uh, oh. ADA. Oh. Just mix with a bit of that seed. Yep, putting it back in. Just cool. to uh, grow some of the plants and that is Yeah, for where the plants will go. Nice. Well, should we get the hose out? Yeah. Start filling. Yeah. 
we're just filling it up for the first time. So what we're doing is we've just got the hose on softly and it's just going into this little dish here and then we're going to wait for it to get up above the gravel before we put it on full blast just to keep it as clean as possible. We're just planting some of the fowl and then what was the other plant called again? Ludwig Eurupens. Just put a little bit of that in the back corner, hoping it will um, grow up. So that's that one here, and this one's been growing immersed, and hopefully what it'll do is, yeah, it'll grow towards the surface. Shoot up to the top and hopefully creep across the top. It looks decently clear. It should clear pretty quickly once the filter's on too. Once the tank finished filling up, we were all finished for the day. We just added the lights back onto the tank, and it did look quite cloudy, so it just needed a little bit of time to settle. I added the rads that Jason gave me into the tank. Then we left it and Jason came back six days later to do some finishing touches on the tank. So it's Friday and we did the skate last Saturday and it's cleared up heaps. It's looking really amazing. I'll give you a bit of a look so you can see how it's ended up. The vowel up there has melted just a little bit but that's going to come back okay, hopefully. But the fish have settled in really nicely. Jason's brought some more rainbow fish that we're gonna add into the tank. And so we've got some more crimson spotted ones to add in. And he's got some more plants as well that we're gonna put in between the rocks and maybe add some more roots into just to kind of do the finishing touches on the tank. After the water cleared up, we noticed you can still see some of that filter box there. So what we're gonna do is just build up the rock a little bit in this corner, put some more sand in behind it and um, put some more vel in there so it actually looks like the vel's growing and tapering down. With this vel here, eventually when it um, establishes, hopefully it'll send runners out through these little pockets as well and grow through the rock and make it look more natural as time goes by. And then we're just gonna add a few other little plants into these pockets and um, just give it a little bit more greenery. That's actually a female flower, that one. They have a male and a female flower. That one's actually got a um, seed casement on the end of it. Then he also just added in some roots as well on the left-hand side because it was a little bit bare over there. After we finished that, we were all done. The last thing I had to do was go and collect some of the fish that we caught at our rainbow fish catching trip a couple of weeks prior. So I went to Keeping Fish Simple and got the glass fish from Nick. Did she get him? Nah, she's too stupid. I ended up leaving the rainbow fish with Nick to breed because I already had plenty from Jason and just took the glass fish. I got seven of them to add into the tank and they've done really well in there. It's now been about a month since Jason initially set the tank up and everything's going really well. I'll show you a bit of a before and after of the last scape that I had done myself that I had tried quite hard with as well. It looks so much better now and so much more natural. I absolutely love it. Jason's just done such an amazing job. He also made it so I can get the glass cleaner around to get rid of the algae without bumping anything. The only issues I've had is the vowel has melted a little bit, but even then it's starting to grow back. The Ludwigia has done really well. That plant is just booming. Like it's grown so much since we added it in. The Leperonis did eat some of the plants that we added and they look like they're kind of hanging in there, but they've pulled quite a bit up, which I just pop into the sump when they pull them up to just give them a bit of a chance to regrow. But that's okay, because it's not really meant to be a planted tank anyway. It's mainly just a hardscape. The only other thing is one of the roots actually floated up at one point and I just put it back, but that's absolutely it. And the blue acaras do a little bit of digging when they're breeding and I do have a spiny eel that's in there. It's always hiding, but it is in there. And I've seen it digging amongst the rocks as well, but still everything stayed really stable. So that's really good. It's a really solid way to do it. How Jason's done it, building everything up by layers, even without using glue. 
And the glue that I got from Mad Aquariums has held up really well as well. That root has not gone anywhere whatsoever. It stayed in place and it's a good peace of mind knowing that it's just going to stay there because you can make these roots so they don't float but they got left out in the sun when Jason brought them here so then they started floating again. So it's good just to be able to glue stuff down while you're waiting for it to actually get waterlogged. Jason's just a wealth of knowledge and I really respect what he does and I appreciate it so much. So thank you so much, Jason, for what you've done. Uh, you've done an awesome job and I'm so glad I get to come home and appreciate this tank every day. I did go out last weekend with my friend Maggie to get some more rainbow fish to actually add into the tank as well. So I'm going to be uploading that video, so keep an eye out for it. If you're not subscribed already, make sure you do and you can turn on the little bell notification so that you get notified each time that I upload a new video. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.